Adhikarna 2. The departing soul reaches air after year. Sutra 2. Vayum abdad vishesha vishesha bhyam. The soul of the knower of the qualified Brahman reaches Vayum air. Abdat from the year. Avishesha Vishesha Bhyam, owing to the absence and presence of specification. Translation The soul of the knower of the qualified Brahman goes from the year to air on account of the absence and presence of specification. In what definite order, again, should the different presentations of the progress of the soul along the path of the gods be linked up in a chain of attributes and substantives? That link is supplied by the teacher acting as a friend. The Kausi Takins read of their path of the gods thus, Attaining this path of the gods, he comes to the world of fire. He comes to the world of air. He comes to the world of Varuna. He comes to the world of Indra. He comes to the world of Prajapati, Virat. He comes to the world of Brahma, Hiranyagarbha, Kaushitaki 1, 3. There, the term world of fire is synonymous with flame of Brihararanyaka 6, 2, 15, since both indicate burning so that one need not take any pains for the establishment of an order with regard to these. But since the deity of air is not heard of in the path starting from the deity of flame in the Chandogya, where should it be placed? The answer is being given by saying that in the text they reach the deity of flame, from flame the deity of day, from day the deity of the bright fortnight, from the bright fortnight, the deity of the six months during which the sun moves northward. From the six months to the deity of the year. From the year to the deity of the sun. Chandogya 5.10.1 They assign the position of air after the year and before the sun. Why should it be so? Owing to the absence and presence of specification. Thus it is that the air that is not very definitely located in the text, he comes to the world of air, Kaushitaki 1, 3, is seen to be spoken of definitely in another Upanishad. When a man departs from this world, he reaches air, which makes an opening there for him like the hole of a chariot wheel. He goes upward through that and reaches the sun, Brihadaranyaka 5, 10, 1. Since in this text air is specifically placed before the sun, air is to be assigned a position between the year and the sun. Opponent. Why, again, after noticing the specific mention of air after fire, in Kaushitaki 1.3, should not air be placed after flame? Vedantin. We claim that there is no such specification. Opponent. Was not the text quoted... Attaining this path of the gods, he comes to the world of fire, he comes to the world of air, he comes to the world of Varuna. Kaushitaki 1.3 The answer is that here the statement is merely in the form of an enumeration of the things one after the other, there being nothing indicative of any serial order. The object's reach are alone enumerated here by saying that he goes to such and such regions, whereas in the other Brihadaranyaka text, it is stated that he proceeds up through an opening as big as the hole of a chariot wheel to reach the sun, so that a sequence is well understood. Hence the statement, owing to the absence and presence of specification, 
is quite reasonable. The Vajasayayans, however, have this reading. From the months to the world of the gods, from the world of the gods to the sun. Brihadaranyaka 6.2.15 According to that text, the soul should reach air from the world of the gods so that the sun may be reached next. But when the aphorist says that the soul reaches air from the year, he has the Chandogya text in view. 5.10.1 As between the Chandogya and the Brihadaranyaka Upanishads, one omits the world of the gods and the other the year. But since both are authoritative, both of these have to be added to both. And while doing so, it has to be borne in mind that the year, being connected with the months, has to be placed earlier and the world of the gods later. Namaste. So why should we quibble over the order of the realms or the gods? which comprise the path of the sun, the path by which the enlightened beings leave the body, at least those who are enlightened in the conditioned Brahman. Well, I think after all is said and done, there is no need to enumerate all this detail and to figure out all these contradictions and so on because the die is already cast at the time of death itself when leaving the body. One is taken either to the moon or to the sun. Huh? Or if someone is very sinful, they go directly to hell. <laughs> the Yamadutas drag them off and, you know, there's many gruesome descriptions of this in the Puranas. How the Yamadutas come with dogs and chains and weapons and drag the soul out of the body, you know, kicking and screaming. Because why? They're attached. They're not looking forward to death. They're dreading it because they know. Deep down, they all know. They've been sinful. They've been rascals. They are going against the scriptures, against the Dharma, and so forth. So they're not looking forward to death. They know they're going to be punished. Whether they claim to be atheists or whatever, it doesn't matter. You know? I mean, atheism is actually a really stupid thing because it is the negation of, of faith in God. Usually when, when somebody tells me they're an atheist, I said, well, what denomination atheist are you? A Catholic atheist, a Protestant atheist, a Jewish atheist? And then they say, oh, I don't believe in any of it. So I said, oh, oh, a Unitarian Universalist atheist. <laughs> because you cannot have atheism without theism. You cannot have the devil without God. You cannot have sin without Dharma. See, it's a negation, which means it's actually based on the positive. So it's not a thing in itself. It's simply a shadow of the reality. But anyway, those people don't matter because they're gone. They're becoming mosquitoes in their next life or whatever. Or after many, many years of eating beef, it's stated in the scriptures, they have to be born as a cow for every hair on the bodies of all the animals that were slaughtered for their tongue, for their taste. I would not want to be in their shoes. That's why I became vegetarian when I was 16. My family was shocked. <laughs> You're going to starve to death. <laughs> well, I'm still going somehow or other. So 
What then is the purpose of these detailed descriptions and arguments about the order of the stages of the path? Well, it's eulogy. In other words, praise, glorification of the path of the sun. Because it's already been determined where you're going. That's already done. And we'll read later on in uh, a couple of sutras that at the time of entering on this path, the soul is unconscious. And therefore, a deity, a non-human being, comes to escort him, to carry him, actually, up these stages of the path until he regains his consciousness. So this is actually telling a very nice story that God cares for his devotee, the realized being, the Brahman realized soul, so much so that even if he falls unconscious after leaving the body, he sends one of his servants to carry him, literally carry him home. You know, the more, the more I learn about these truths of spiritual life, the more I have to appreciate the love and care of God and goddess for their children. They really care. And someone may say, well, why is there suffering in the world? Because you are sinful. You create bad karma. You create suffering for others. Therefore, you must also suffer as a result. And it's not retribution. You know, it, it doesn't do anything for God to punish people. It's for their benefit to educate them in the results of these wrong activities. Now, I know somebody is going to come up and say, well, if you're really on the non-dual consciousness, you don't make any distinction between right and wrong, good and bad, dharma and adharma, and so on. Nonsense. Because the being deluded in duality in samsara cannot comprehend the oneness of Brahman. That's why the scriptures assume that the reader is ignorant. And they begin from the dualistic platform. Uh, the Vedas, the original four Vedas, are simply instructions for performing rituals, rites. Why is that? Because they assume that the person is ignorant and they require purification so that they can comprehend the higher teachings. And the higher teachings are given in the Brahmanas, the Aranyakas, and the ultimate is given in the Upanishads. So these, this whole section, actually, these sutras in the third pada are glorifying the path of the sun the way that the enlightened beings, the purified devotees, leave their bodies and ascend to the world of God. So we can look forward to this. Death is not a tragedy for us. It's our redemption. It's our deliverance. It means the end of all our suffering. Because in God's world, there is no suffering. It's all love. Everything is there. There's no scarcity of resources, no struggle, no competition. Everyone has all they need. Uh, we'll read about that in the fourth pada, which is coming up. So really, what this is doing is encouraging the devotees to, you know, redouble and and continue and maintain their efforts. Because every time we perform a pious activity, whether it's reading a scripture, chanting a mantra, hearing a talk about dharma, or whatever it is, puja, 
sacrifice, any of these pious activities, we create impressions that at the time of death give us a higher destination. Whereas the rascals who do harm to others and to themselves, who destroy the world through nasty industrial activities and such, wars and whatever, they, they have nothing to look forward to after death. Huh? So they try to avoid it as much as possible. But there's a nice story. There was a Buddhist monk traveling in a party of travelers going through a dangerous forest. And sure enough, they were attacked by thieves and held captive and robbed of everything they had. And then the thieves announced, and then we're going to kill you all so you can't warn others. And everybody was, you know, terrified, except the monk. The monk goes, oh, really? How interesting. Well, when are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? And so and the thieves were like, what? You know, we've never seen this kind of behavior before. And so they began talking with the monk. And pretty soon, <laughs> they themselves adopted Ahimsa and let everybody go. <laughs> They became converts to the Buddha's teaching. Uh, if only the Buddhists of today were so dedicated and so highly realized. But you see, this kind of confidence comes from the knowledge that one is going to reach a higher destination after death. How does one know this? Because one realizes that destination in this very life itself. And that is the state of the Jivan Mukta. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.